gravity-type davits swing a lifeboat outward and lower it into the water. They consist mainly of a pair of frames, davit arms, a lashing device, boat falls, suspension blocks, and boat winches. The lifeboat is lowered at a constant speed, using its own weight, by operating either the remote control wire inside the lifeboat or the remote control lever on the ship's deck. Let us take a closer look at lowering and launching operations for totally enclosed lifeboats with gravity-type davits. Prepare a set of transceivers and confirm that communication is possible. Also confirm that the cable for the storage battery charge has been detached. Confirm attachment of the painter to the lifeboat's painter release device. The painter should be connected to the bit of the parent ship as far forward as practicable. Remove the overlashing wire ropes if fitted. Some vessels are not equipped with overlashing wire ropes. Overlashing wire ropes, once removed, should be kept together, but far enough away to prevent entanglement with the lifeboat. Tangling of the rope with the lifeboat could lead to a serious accident. The auto-trigger wire rope comes off automatically when the lifeboat is swung out. Pull out the safety pin to release the boat winch brake. Pull out the davit arm stop safety pins, both fore and aft, and release the stop by pulling down the handle in one continuous motion. Confirm that the remote control wire has been drawn into the lifeboat. Then open the access hatch and get on board. Once inside the lifeboat, immediately fit the bottom plug. Open the fuel valve and the cooling seawater valve. And close the drain valve on the exhaust pipe. Then confirm that all crew on board have fastened their seatbelts. The operator starts the engine and pulls down on the remote control wire to swing out the lifeboat. Once swing out is complete, fully pull down the remote control wire. The lifeboat will descend at a fixed speed using its own weight. As the lifeboat approaches the water's surface, the operator should alert the crew about impending splashdown. Avoid rapid swing-outs or abrupt halts during the swing-out operation, as this can have a dangerous impact on the boat. Inching operation is also dangerous, since it shakes the lifeboat. Lifeboat swing-out and lowering operation can also be conducted using the operation lever on the deck of the parent ship. There are two types of release for launching a lifeboat. One is the offload release, the standard method of launch and release, and the other is the onload release, which is to be conducted in emergency situations only. When the lifeboat is fully waterborne and there is no load on the release hook, carry out offload release.
when the lifeboat is not fully waterborne and there is a load on the hook, on-load release shall be performed. The release gear system comprises a pair of release hooks located fore and aft of the boat, a release handle on the side of the steering seat, a pair of control cables, a hydrostatic unit to prevent the lifeboat from plunging due to mishandling, and an interlock cable. There are two types of hydrostatic unit a direct system that controls detected water pressure directly through an interlock cable, and an electric type that electrically controls the interlock lever with pressure signals to operate the relay and the solenoid. The interlock mechanism, which prevents a mishandled lifeboat from falling before it is fully waterborne, became mandatory for all lifeboats under the SOLAS 96 Amendment. The offload release is an operation conducted when the lifeboat is fully waterborne and there is no load on the release hook. Prior to conducting this operation, the following should be confirmed. No ropes or lines are entangled on the fore and aft release hooks. The lifeboat is fully waterborne. The engine has been started. And finally, all crew are in their seats with their seat belts fastened. After all this has been confirmed, the operator releases the safety lock device, pulls out the release handle safety pin, and pulls the release handle to the fully open position in one continuous action. Some release gear systems do not have a safety lock device. In normal situations, the interlock unit detects the water pressure and releases the interlock when the boat is afloat, so it is possible to carry out an offload release using the release handle. However, in the event that the hooks have not released, it is necessary to conduct an onload release. The onload release should be reserved for emergency use only when the hooks are not released due to malfunction of the hydrostatic unit or when seas are rough and normal offload release is not advisable. To conduct an onload release, first open the cover of the interlock device. Fully raise the hydrostatic interlock lever and while holding it, insert the securing pin to release the interlock. Then, release the safety lock device. Next, remove the release handle safety pin and pull the release handle to the fully open position in one continuous action. Some release gear systems do not have a safety lock device. Release the painter and immediately get clear of the ship. Now let's look at the recovery operation. At least three persons are required for this operation. Accidents involving lifeboats often take place during recovery. Of these accidents, 70% are due to improper resetting of the release gear. As such, mastering the proper way to reset the release gear is extremely important. Properly resetting the release hook is an essential part of every recovery operation. Improper resetting may lead to the lifeboat being held by only one hook or even falling, resulting in a fatal accident. There are various types of release hooks. Regardless of type, improper resetting is indicated when the safety pin cannot be smoothly inserted or when extra force is required to return the release handle to the set position. If you have any doubts about the resetting operation, start over and redo each step in the process.
To reset the release hooks, begin by pulling the release handle upward for about 30 degrees. Next, simultaneously lift the fore and aft hooks. After ensuring that the hooks have been reset properly, insert the safety pin. Finally, reset the safety lock device and make sure that it is in the locked position. The safety pin cannot be inserted unless the release handle is in its locked position. The reset procedure is the same no matter which type of release hook you are dealing with. Lift up both the fore and aft hooks and swing down the release hook reset levers. The release handle is automatically reset. Confirm that the release handle is fully reset and insert the safety pin. Next, insert the winch handbrake safety pin. Maneuver the lifeboat until it is under the boat falls. Using the winch, adjust the suspension links to the proper height. Simultaneously connect the suspension links to both the fore and aft hooks. Operate the winch using a remote controller and begin hoisting. Stop hoisting the lifeboat when it is just clear of the water and confirm that the fore and aft hooks are properly connected. Also confirm that the hydrostatic interlock lever has been moved back to the locked position. Resume hoisting. When the davit arm approaches the stowed position, the davit arm strikes the limit switch and the boat winch stops automatically. Only after it has been confirmed that the winch has stopped completely may the crew disembark the lifeboat. Place two persons on the davit platform to oversee proper stowage. When the winch stops automatically, manually hoist the davit arm. Confirm that the davit arm is in contact with the platform stop and cease winding. Beware of overwinding. Do not forget to detach the manual hoisting handle once winding has been completed. Immediately reset the davit arm stop and insert the safety pin in the davit arm stop handle. After removing the handbrake safety pin, lower the suspension blocks on the davit horn by releasing the handbrake. If the suspension blocks are not on the davit horn, the boat falls will remain under tension and may be damaged. Insert the handbrake safety pin. Be sure to turn the end of the safety pin. Install the auto trigger wire rope and use turnbuckles to tighten it. Install and tighten the overlashing wire rope. The painter should be kept attached to the painter release hook at all times.
When using recovery straps in rough seas, connect the recovery strap between the release hook and suspension links. Once the lifeboat is out of the water, connect the maintenance wire to the release hook. Shift the boat's weight onto the maintenance wire. Remove the recovery straps and attach the suspension links to the hooks and execute the lifeboat recovery operation. Fire protected lifeboats are totally enclosed lifeboats with water spray and air supply systems and are carried on ships such as tankers. The water spray system on fire protected lifeboats effectively cools the surface of the boat envelope in order to protect the hull surface from fire damage and the cabin from high temperatures thereby enabling the lifeboat and the crew to evacuate to a safe sea area if fire breaks out near the parent ship following an accident. The system protects the lifeboat and crew for at least eight minutes. The spray system pumps seawater with a spray pump, ejecting it from nozzles on the external surface of the boat, cooling the hull. Before starting the operation, be sure to close the hatches and other openings and confirm that the main engine is idling. When preparations are completed, increase the RPM of the main engine and begin spraying. The air supply system protects the crew when they encounter a fire on the sea or are in an environment filled with toxic gas. In escaping from a hazardous area, all lifeboat openings are closed. The system provides clean air sufficient to operate the main engine and sustain the crew for not less than 10 minutes. Containers of highly compressed air found inside the lifeboat supply air to the lifeboat via a pressure regulator. During use, the valves on every compressed air container and the pressure check stop valve have to be opened. Confirm that pressure for air containers is maintained at the primary pressure gauge level indicated on the high pressure side of the air regulator. While observing the secondary pressure gauge level on the low pressure side of the air regulator, adjust the pressure using the regulator's handle so that the in-boat differential pressure indicator shows a pressure slightly higher than the external air pressure. Check that the air is being discharged. Now let's look at the free fall lifeboat system. All bulk carriers of 500 gross tonnage and upwards built on or after July the 1st, 2006 are required to have a free fall lifeboat. Free fall lifeboats are placed at the ship's stern. In the event of an emergency, the crew board the lifeboat in its stowed position and then conduct a free-fall launch. 
the launching operation can be performed from inside the lifeboat. The davit unit of a free-fall lifeboat consists mainly of a slide track, a davit arm, a pair of suspensions, a hydraulic cylinder and a lashing device. The winch is composed of a wire drum, a hydraulic motor, speed reduction gear and hydraulic brake gear. Prior to launch, make sure that the water surface is free of obstacles. Next, release the lashing line and confirm that the lashing plate has been released. The lashing plate will be released automatically once the lashing line is released. If the lashing plate is not released, release it manually using the attached nylon rope. Next, check that the battery charge cable has been detached. Then remove the release hook safety pin and open the rear hatch. The coxswain should confirm that all necessary launch preparations have been completed. The crew should then board the lifeboat from the rear hatch. Finally, the coxswain boards the lifeboat and closes the hatch tightly from inside. After everyone is on board, confirm that the boat's drain valve has been closed. All crew members should be seated, should fasten their seat belts, and should grasp the handrail on the seat in front of them. Do not forget to use the headrest belt if it is available. The operator should conduct a final check to confirm that all crew members have fastened their seat belts and that they have not put on life jackets. Then the operator may be seated and fasten his or her seat belt. When doing so, please avoid touching the release lever. The operator starts the engine. Removes the release lever securing pin and closes the bypass valve. Pumping the release lever several times releases the main lashing, allowing the lifeboat to achieve free fall launch. Once the launch has been completed, immediately leave the parent ship for a safer area. Never use a painter during a free-fall launch. In the event the hydraulic system does not function properly and emergency release is required, confirm that the bypass valve is open. Break the acrylic cover. Insert the emergency release handle and turn the emergency release bolt clockwise until it comes to a stop. The stopper of the main lashing will open and the lifeboat will be launched. When a free fall is not possible due to insufficient water depth or when the ship is in an inappropriate area for a free fall, it is possible to lower and launch the lifeboat using davit arms. 
when launch preparations have been completed and confirmed, switch on the hydraulic power pack. Operate the control lever to lower the traverse and subsequently remove the hook lashing lines. Attach the wire ropes to the suspension. Using the lever, position the davit arms just above the boat lifting position and adjust the fore and aft balance of the lifeboat. The crew members embark the lifeboat from the rear hatch, take their seats and fasten their seat belts. Each member should grasp the handrail on the seat in front of them. The operator then boards the lifeboat and closes the hatch. The operator confirms that all crew members have fastened their seat belts and then removes the pin securing the release lever and closes the bypass valve. Pumping the lever several times releases the release hook and removes the main lashing. After visually confirming that the main lashing has been released, the operator on the main ship shall use the control lever to swing the davit arms to the proper lowering position and then lower the lifeboat. When the boat is waterborne and has become well balanced, the operator on board the lifeboat shall indicate to the operator on the parent ship to stop lowering the boat. The operator on board shall remove the wire ropes used to suspend the boat and attach them to the plate provided. The boat engine can now be started. Immediately leave the area of the main ship. Switch on the hydraulic power pack on the parent ship. The operator on deck uses the control lever to swing out the davit arms. Next, lower the suspensions to a height allowing the wire ropes for hanging the boat to be attached. These steps should be carried out under instruction from an operator on board the lifeboat. The operator on board the lifeboat attaches the wire ropes to the suspensions. After signalling to the operator on deck, the operator on board the lifeboat should be seated with seat belt fastened and should stop the engine. The operator on deck confirms that the engine has been stopped and starts hoisting the boat. The movement of the traverse should be halted prior to coming into contact with the hinge block and the wire rope support. By operating the control lever, stow the davit arm to the boat set position. Station an operator on the platform. Stop the operation before the davit rear span and the boat come into contact. Using the control lever, lower the lifeboat until it is positioned on the roller. Raise and lower the lifeboat several times with the control lever, thus adjusting the stowed position until it is possible to attach the main lashing. Each operation should be implemented slowly and in concert with the signals provided by the operator stationed on the platform. Securely attach the main lashing to the release hook. After confirming that the main lashing is secure, the crew may disembark the lifeboat via the rear hatch. The operator on deck lowers the suspensions, detaches the wire ropes for hanging the boat and attaches them to the plate provided. Using the control lever, move the davit arms to the stowing position. 
although the davit arm stops moving when it comes into contact with the arm support, keep an eye on the davit arm during this operation. Attach the hook lashing lines to the suspensions. Set the lashing line. The lashing plate is set automatically once the lashing lines are attached. Turn off the power pack. 